everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, we're going to learn how to crochet the Copenhagen cow. This is a beautiful cow worked up in an easy V-stitch. As many of you know, I'm a huge fan of V-stitch. It just has a beautiful look and it's super easy to work up. Now this cow is worked in the round, so we don't have to seam. And this is for one of those times when you have a really special skein of sock yarn or fingering weight yarn and it just really shows off the stitches and the colors really beautifully. Now my particular yarn I'll be using, and we'll get into that in a little bit moment in a moment, but um, I have this beautiful gradient that goes from like a soft charcoal uh, all the way through a cream and then a, a lovely coral on top. Now, the dimensions are a little bit different than a lot of the cows I've made before. This cow is like sky high. It's really, really tall. And I did that on purpose because I've always wanted a tall cow. Um, but the, the reason for that is because it has this amazing drape to it and it just really slouches up the neck really perfectly. I just really love the dimensions. Now I'm going to show you along in the, uh, further along in the video, you know, you can really take this as high as you like. You don't have to go as tall as mine. I just wanted that, that wonderful slouch that this uh, super duper soft sock yarn provides. Um, now for the dimensions, the circumference of this is about 24 inches around and the height is 18 inches tall. Now you could uh, make yours about half this size and make your cow a little bit shorter. Um, but it's completely up to you. It's, it's customizable in that regard. So let's jump right in and get started. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a five millimeter H crochet hook. I'm going to be using my furls hook. This is their new, um, peach color with the rose gold. I'll put the link down below for that. If you're interested, I get a lot of questions about my hooks. And for the yarn, we're going to be using a yarn called Deluxe Sock, and this is by Summit Road Fibers, and they make this exclusively for Global Backyard. If you hop on over to the Fiberflex blog, it comes in these beautiful yarn cakes. Um, there's some gray gradients, there's a speckled one, there's an all coral one, like shades of coral. The one I'm going to be using is this gray, and then it goes into this cream, and then this soft coral at the top. So, um, and in just a minute, you'll see me using the yarn cake as we start the tutorial. But this is a really beautiful yarn and you can get all the info at the Fiberflux blog. So let's get started. To begin, we're going to put a slip knot on our hook. So wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up a loop and tighten. Next, we're going to make our starting chain. Now our starting chain is 120 chains. If you wanna change uh, the circumference of your cowl just work in multiples of three and if you're unfamiliar with that concept it's just three plus three plus three plus three plus three and so on until your circumference is what you need it to be okay so multiple of three we're going to do 120 chains so to make a chain wrap yarn around the hook bring it through the loop that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 11, 119, whoops, and 120. Okay, so here's our starting chain. Now I use the H hook like we talked about earlier. If your starting chain is a little bit too tight, go up a hook size for just the starting chain, and then you can go back to the H for the rest of your project. Now what we're gonna do is join in the farthest chain from the hook, that very first chain you made down at the other end, with a slip stitch and that's going to join our cowl together and then we're going to start working upward with our V stitch, okay? So we want to, when we're joining, we want to be careful not to twist our chains, okay? So we're going to, what I like to do is sort of run things down along my hand like this and just make sure everything is nice and flat, nothing is getting twisted. We need to turn it a little bit. This part is worth taking the time, especially with a very long chain like we created just now. You want to definitely take the time to not let your starting chain twist. So just take a moment and just you know run it down your hand, especially like a fine yarn like this, like a sock weight yarn or fingering weights, you know, the very fine yarns. 
you want to do this nice and slow so that you can see that you're not twisting. So just kind of run it down your hand till you get to that very last chain here. And then we're going to join with the slip stitch. So you know what, before we continue, let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. So insert the hook into that chain farthest from the hook. And when you insert, make sure you get those two loops on there. And then what we're going to do is wrap yarn around hook, bring it through those loops. Now you'll have two loops on your hook. Bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. Now we're ready to continue. So our cowl, you can see it's about that big of an opening there. Again, if you want to change it, it is a multiple of three. Now I'm not going to worry about this tail for now. We'll just weave that in later. Okay, so let's get ready for round one. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is chain four. One, two, three, and four. Now this is going to count as our first double crochet of the round and then a chain one, okay? And you'll see what I mean a little bit more as we move along. Okay, so this first, very first chain you see, you're going to work a double crochet right into that very first chain, okay? Just like that, okay? Then we're going to skip two chains, so one, two, and in the chain after that we're going to work our first official V. So this kind of creates the V at the beginning of the round. But to make a V from here on out, what we're going to do is we're going to work a double crochet. In case you're not familiar with the double crochet, just wrap yarn around hook, insert it into that chain, bring up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the next two loops. Okay, that's the double crochet in case you're unfamiliar with that. Let me get a little bit more yarn out of my yarn cake here. You can already see some of the variegated colors back, happening back here, so that's always fun to see. Okay, so we worked our double crochet, then we're going to chain one, and then in that same chain, we're going to work another double crochet right in that same chain okay so work your next double crochet okay now we're going to just repeat what we've just done so skip two chains one two and in that next chain work your next V so remember the V's all the way around for the rest of the pattern will be double crochet chain one and a double crochet just like that okay Skip two chains, one, two, and in the chain after that, work your next V. Double crochet, chain one, whoops, and double crochet. Now just this first round, round one, we're just counting, okay? So after that, we're going to be working into the spaces, and it's going to kind of pick up speed a little bit more, okay? So next, skip two chains, one, two, and in the next chain, work your next V, okay? So double crochet, chain one, and a double crochet, all in that same chain. Okay, we're gonna do this a few more times together and then we'll work on the rest of the row. So skip two chains, one, two, and in the next chain, work your double crochet, chain one, double crochet, okay? So double crochet, chain one, double crochet. All right, let's work one more together and then we're just gonna be repeating this all the way around. So skip two chains, one, two, and in the next chain, work your V. Remember that's double crochet, chain one, double crochet, okay? I'm going to continue all the way around these chains, skipping two chains, one, two, in the next chain working your V. So just do that all the way around, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, okay? So let's continue around and then we'll rejoin in just a moment and I'm going to show you how to move on to round two. Round two is the round you'll do for the rest of your cowl, so it's a pretty easy cowl and we're going to work on the next round when we come back. Okay, I'm just working that last V of our round. Double crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. And then there'll be 
uh, two chains there. Just skip those last two chains and then do your join, okay? Now, because of all the chains that we're working into and all the counting, um, if you're short a chain or have an extra chain, it's okay. It'll kind of blend together. So don't stress too much if you're off by a chain. It's totally fine. Okay, so remember where we began with our starting chain? Remember that V right there? Um, earlier I said that, that that chain four at the beginning of the round counted as the first three counted as a double crochet, and then we did that chain one also. So that counts as like the first double crochet of the V and then that chain one in, the, in between the two double crochets. So you're going to count three chains up, one, two, three, and join with a slip stitch to close the round. So insert the hook into that third chain up, bring up a loop, now bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook, okay? Just like that, and then it looks just like every other V of our round, okay? So let's get started. We're going to get this tail out of the way and just deal with that later. Okay, so once again we're going to chain four, because once again that's going to count as the double crochet chain one. So one, two, three, and four. And then in that first V that you see, you're going to work a double crochet right into that first V. Okay. So when you do the V stitch, your V's are going to be stacked. We're going to be working into the V's from the previous row. So or round rather. So hop over to that next V. And in that chain one space, remember we did a chain one, that created a space in our V. We're going to work another V, okay? So double crochet, chain one, double crochet, just like that. Now you can see how the Vs stack into themselves, okay? So hop over to the next V, we're going to do the same thing, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Now this round is much quicker and faster than the round we just did because we're not counting chains or skipping things or anything like that. We're simply just working each V into the chain one space from the previous round. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Hop over to the next V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. We're just going to do this all the way around. Next V, double crochet, chain one, whoops, let's back up. Sometimes we drop a stitch or the stitch doesn't look the way we wanted it to look. Perfectly fine. The beauty of crochet is it's super easy to back up and redo a stitch. Sometimes with knitting, it's a little bit more involved to go backwards, but with crochet, you can just pull it apart, back up just a little bit, and redo it, okay? All right, I'm just working my Vs into each chain one space all the way around, okay? Double crochet, chain one, double crochet, okay? So let's continue doing this all the way around, and let's just look at our work looks beautiful, nice and lacy. And we're going to continue working our V's all the way around. So work a V into each chain one space all the way around. Now when we get towards the end, I'm going to show you how to finish off round two. And then once we've done round two in its entirety, then you'll know how to do the entire rest of the cow. So it's super, super easy. And I love the V-stitch, it's one of my favorite stitches. If you follow the FiberFlux channel, you'll know that I use this stitch quite a bit. It's a favorite of mine. It's a really easy and beautiful way to make some lacy looking stitches with minimal effort. And it's super fast and you're just working into the spaces. You're not working in any particular stitches. It's just a nice, easy going project. Okay, so let's continue around and then we'll rejoin and look at our handiwork and I'll show you how to finish up round two. Okay, coming up to the end of round two, we're going to work that very last V into the chain one space. And now we're back where we started. Remember that chain four at the beginning of our round? 
we're going to count three chains up. Same thing we did before. One, two, three. Join with a slip stitch to close the round. Okay, so now you know pretty much everything you need to know to finish the cowl. Now we're going to do the weaving of the ends and all that at the end of the video, but all you need to do is continue with round two over and over and over again until you either run out of yarn like I'm going to do. I'm going to use this beautiful yarn cake up because I want to see all these fabulous, you can see on the side here, all these fabulous, fabulous colors play out. But what you want to do is just keep working round two over and over and over until the height is what you want it to be. Now mine I'm going to make a little taller than normal because well, A, I have lots of yarn to play with here, but also uh, I want it to be nice and slouchy. So uh, just make it as tall as you'd like it to be uh, until you run out of yarn or uh, you get it the height that you want. If you need to see round two again, simply back up the video and you can watch it as many times as you need to. Okay, so I'm going to continue with my cowl and we'll rejoin in just a bit and I'm going to show you how to finish it up. Just working that last V of our round. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And then I'm gonna join third chain up, one, two, three, with a slip stitch to close the round. And our cowl is complete. So all we need to do now is just do a little bit of finish work. So I'm gonna grab my scissors. And what we're gonna do is just snip the yarn. Now I didn't have quite enough to to go around another round, but I use the entire yarn cake. And then you can just wrap the yarn around your hook and bring it through the loop. Now if you did multiple colors, you may have a few more ends, but all you need to do is kind of flip that in so it's inside out. And you're going to thread your tapestry needle. I only have two ends because I just used one skein of yarn here. Okay, so all we're going to do is go into those stitches. Now I'm going into the inside of this, not the outside of it. I'm just going to go through some of these loops here. When you do lacy things, to me the V-stitch is a little lacy. You just want to try to keep it nice and neat because you don't want uh, your ends to show. Now when you have variegated yarn like this, try to, so I have some coral here and some gray, just try to not go down too far because it starts turning gray because my tail is pretty um, much on the coral side completely. So I don't want to go too far down into that gray area because it'll kind of stick out. So I just went in one direction and came back in the other direction here. And all we're going to do now is just snip our tail. And then you can kind of shape it up a little bit. Now, as you can see, my cow is really, really tall. And I've you don't really have to make yours as tall as mine, but I wanted mine to be kind of tall because when you wear it, now this is sock yarn and it has a really beautiful drape, but when you wear it, you're gonna get some really nice slouching around the neck. You can see more photos on the Fiberflex blog but I've always wanted a tall cow. Like a lot of cows are sort of necklace shaped. This one really comes up the neck and is uh, nice and cozy and has a beautiful drape to it. So let's take care of that one last tail, I'm trying to find it here. And this one is more gray. So now it's gray for a while, so I don't have to worry about this one as much. But what we're gonna do is just do the same thing. Go in one direction. Now I turned my cow to the inside part here. And we're just going to go in one direction with our tail, just like that, and then we're going to come back in the other direction. Uh, you don't have to necessarily go back in a different direction, but I find that it kind of keeps that tail locked into place. Okay, so we just need to snip this, and I am not going to be blocking this. I think it's just perfect the way it is. And so our cowl is finished, and you can see it's really tall and nice and slouchy. Now, you don't have to obviously go as tall as mine, but I really wanted that, that beautiful slouch and that, that full gradient. My, the particular yarn I had went from gray to kind of like cream to coral, so I really wanted that full gradient effect to show, and it has just a really fun drape. 
So that is how you crochet the Copenhagen cowl. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again. Bye.